Hey guys, finally I made a video about Anhydrous Hydrazine. Make sure you'll watch this video till the end where there will be many exotic reactions with explosions and you'll see them all in slow mo just the way you like it. And here we go! This ampule contains Anhydrous Hydrazine. It's a toxic, flammable, carcinogenic, environmental toxic and skin corrosive. Anhydrous hydrazine also is a highly hygroscopic liquid that has the ability to consume carbon dioxide and oxygen of air. That's why as soon as the ampule is opened, anhydrous hydrazine starts to spoil, so I don't have that much time to show you the reactions involving this reagent. So anhydrous hydrazine is a liquid that fumes quite intensely in air. It can be ignited, which causes it to burn with a calm yellow-orange flame. Liquid oxygen increases the combustion of hydrazine just barely, so it's less impactful than you might have thought earlier. Unlike ordinary oxygen, liquid azonated oxygen is able to ignite hydrazine on contact with it. You can clearly see this process unfold in slow-mo. A nitrous oxide causes an even more violent combustion of hydrazine than liquid oxygen does. Take a look at hydrazine combustion in slow-mo. You can see it occurring around a drop of nitrous oxide. It looks like a stream of icy meteors sliding up as they enter the atmosphere. Various liquid oxidizers are able to inflame hydrazine on contact with it, and all these reactions might look the same at first, since we just added a drop of oxidizer to hydrazine, uh, which leads to an instant flare. However, if you take a close look, you'll realize all these reactions are different and unique in their own way, and we'll make sure of that right now. Now let's move on to hypergolic reactions. Hypergolic reactions are reactions whose components spontaneously ignite when they come into contact with each other. The first reaction involves chromal chloride. In this reaction you can see the formation of smoke. Its greenish color indicates that it contains chromium compounds in oxidation state plus 3.
To me, this reaction resembles the birth of a sun or some gas giant or star. What does this reaction look like to you? Let me know in the comments. Some gases can be stored in liquefied state in a sealed ampule at room temperature. This ampule contains liquid nitrogen dioxide, or to be more precise, the mixture of nitrogen dioxide and dinitrogen tetroxide. The concentration of the latter increases as the temperature decreases. In combination with dinitrogen tetroxide, hydrazine becomes a hypergolic propellant. The fuel and the oxidizer ignite when they come into contact with each other, with no source of ignition whatsoever. Let's see it happening first on a watch glass and then in a test tube. If there is a planet where it rains nitrogen dioxide, it should look something like this. This reaction has slightly different visuals if we add drops of hydrazine to dinitrogen tetroxide. Hydrazine drops will light up like uh, light bulbs. Now let's get a jet flame by adding drops of hydrazine to dinitrogen tetroxide in a test tube. Here you can see a hydrazine drop running down the flask filled with nitrogen dioxide and the contact with its vapors is all it takes to make the drop ignite. 
Kinetic simulations indicated that the origin of the low temperature ignition is the reaction sequence of hydrogen abstraction by nitrogen dioxide from hydrazine. Large amount of heat is released during this reaction sequence, especially by the reaction fall which produces nitrogen, and the resulting temperature rise accelerates the reaction 1, which has a small activation barrier. Adding nitrogen dioxide to hydrazine in a test tube is not safe, as it may cause an explosion. Unfortunately, for this demonstration I didn't manage to get unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine, which is primarily used as a high-energy fuel and rocket propellant. The only hydrazine derivative I got my hands on is phenylhydrazine, though the effect it provides is not that visual and it also produces quite a lot of soot. These ampules contain osmium tetroxide. This oxide is quite volatile and toxic, so it must be stored in sealed ampules. At 40 degrees Celsius, this reagent is already melting, turning into a pale yellow liquid. Here I'm melting it with a blast of hot air. I have a separate video about osmium tetroxide, and you can watch it by clicking the link that must appear on your screen right about now. When osmium tetroxide is cooled down, it instantly crystallizes. Liquid osmium tetroxide is a very strong oxidizing agent, so let's see what it's capable of when it comes into contact with anhydrous hydrazine. In my opinion, it's one of the most exotic reactions you have seen on this channel.
Besides, osmium tetroxide being a strong oxidizer, osmium compounds themselves are very strong catalysts for the composition of hydrazine, which is why the reaction that occurs in contact with it is so violent and explosive. Take a look at this ampule, an orange liquid that fills it may be produced by a long time boiling of vanadium pentoxide and thionyl chloride. This liquid is vanadium oxytrichloride. In a best case scenario, the liquid should have light yellow color, but my sample for the reaction with hydrazine is not fresh enough, hence it's orange due to the presence of vanadium tetrachloride impurity. This shot of vanadium oxytrichloride synthesis is a part of another video that is coming soon on my channel. I already have all the footage I need, so I just need to edit it, so make sure you don't miss it and subscribe. Now let's see how these two liquids will react with each other. Next we move on to the reactions with halogens and we'll be starting with liquid chlorine. Hydrazine ignites on contact with chlorine vapors. If we perform this reaction again in a test tube, you can actually see and even hear the ignition occur.
The reaction of hydrazine with bromine is violent, yet it doesn't cause ignition. For the reaction with fluorine, I actually used cobalt trifluoride instead. Cobalt trifluoride is a powerful oxidizer and fluorinating agent, so it will do the job. A bright brown cobalt trifluoride powder turns dark brown quite rapidly in air. These pale pink stones you see now are iodine pentoxide. Notice how iodine that forms as the reaction occurs instantly dissolves and reduces to hydrogen iodide, so we barely see any purple vapors of iodine. That's how strong the reducing properties of hydrazine are. The results of this reaction are gases – hydrogen, nitrogen, ammonia and hydrogen iodide. Ammonia and hydrogen iodide react to form white smoke of ammonium iodide. This reaction is used to affect rapid decomposition of hydrazine in a high-temperature gas generator. However, if the reaction isn't controlled properly, it may cause an explosion. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video about hypergolic reactions with anhydrous hydrazine. Now I'd like to thank all my patrons who helped me. Uh, creating these videos is very expensive and hard, but your support uh, helps me a lot. Uh, so if you enjoy what I do and would like to help me to create more unique chemical content as some of my viewers do, I'll be glad to see you as a member of my Patreon. Well, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe, like and comment.